Okay, this is the next recursive problem. This is a very classic problem in uh, computer science. It's based on an old story. Uh, a mathematician figured out uh, this puzzle um, back before there was computers. And he said there was these monks in um, um, Vietnam somewhere. And uh, they had this uh, task. They had three really big poles. And on the pole there was these discs. Each disc was, uh, as they were stacked up on the pole, uh, they got smaller and smaller. And these monks were given the task to move all the discs from the first pole uh, to the last pole. But they had to follow certain rules. So first of all, they can only move one ring at a time. They can't lift up three rings at a time or anything. So that they can only move this top ring first, and they can move it to either pole. Uh, but there's another rule. Once they've moved a disk to another pole, they can't move another disk that's bigger on top of it. So you can never put a bigger disk or ring on top of a smaller ring. Uh, so here's a, uh, just an example of a, someone, a model built of this for a smaller problem. And it turns out it's a really big problem because they had originally 64 disks. And uh, the story was if they completed their task and they moved all the disks from one pole to another, um, um, never putting a bigger ring on top of a smaller ring, it would, the uh, end of the universe would come. So and uh, they would all be enlightened and the end of the universe would come and the temple would dissolve to dust. So, and it turns out the rings they were going to move were all gold, according to the ancient monks. So it turns out to move 64 discs this way would take uh, this many steps, which is uh, 2 to the 64th power minus 1. If they moved 1 per second, it would take this many years which is uh, 584 billion years. It's actually bigger than that. It's uh, 0.9. Uh, but the estimated age of the universe so far is just 13.82 billion years. So you can see it's, it's a multiple times the age of the universe it would take them. And even we don't even know if the universe is going to last that long. Uh, now it turns out to solve this problem, uh, if you start thinking about it, it's a really hard problem. Uh, just if you tried just figuring out how to do a four disk, uh, you could spend a long time trying to figure out the, f the fastest way to do it or even if you could do it uh, with these rules. Now you get to use this third pole. They're moving it from the beginning to the last pole and you can use the third pole as some intermediate holding point. Uh, you can't set the disk off on the table or something. Um, so to make this a simpler problem, let's look at how we can just do one step. So uh, let's imagine we have a tower of height. And we, so what we're going to do in the first step of the recursion, we'll look at moving a height minus 1 to an intermediate pole using a final pole. So if we started with all the disk on disk A here, uh, let's look at what would it take to move it so that you could uh, move all the disks but the bottom disk. And if you did that, then you could see you could just move the bottom disk to here and then move all these disks uh, to here so you have a shorter problem. So you'd be moving all these disks onto the largest disk here and you can use A as an intermediate pole. So here's the algorithm to move a tower of height minus one to an intermediate pole. Move the remaining disk to the final pole after you've done that, and then move the tower of height minus one from the intermediate pole that you have left to the final pole using the original pole. So that's basically the algorithm. And we can put that in code. So let's check out the code for this. So you'll see that the code's really simple. There's just one method. Move tower, and you have the height uh, of how many disks we have. We have the from pole, the to pole, and the with pole. So we, we eventually want to move everything from the from pole to the to pole, the middle pole, using the with pole. 
So our base case is if uh, the height is uh, is, it, is, is it greater than greater equal to zero, zero, zero. I mean, it's I mean, greater, it's greater than equal to one, one uh, we, uh, have, we have more to do. do. But, we, but we, we've reached a height of zero, we're done. So this only goes in and does the recursion in that case. So we have two, uh, we call ourself to move only height minus one from the front pole uh, to the width pole. So you notice we're rearranging the the order here, and we're using the two pole as a as a um, intermediate. So so that would move that, and then we move from the front pole, which we started from here. We've moved everything off of the uh, front pole. So now we just move that big disk to the two poles. So we move one disk, and that'll leave the front pole empty, and the um, two pole will have a height of uh, of the problem minus one because we just solved it up here, and now we move everything from for height minus one from the width pole, the intermediate pole, uh, to the two pole using the from pole, and so we repeat that over and over. So these are the recursions uh, here and here, and here move disk. Uh, since we're not actually moving disk, we're just going to print out the steps. So every time we move a disk, we're going to print where we move it from to. And we're going to solve this for three, four disk. Uh, here, let me change my comment. And I'll go ahead and run it, and you can see all the steps that do four disk. And you can do a little diagram, or make a little model for yourself and prove this works. So once you run this, you just follow the steps, and it would have you step through to actually solve it. So here we have all the steps for moving four disk. Uh, now there's an animation that you can run also to see how this works. Uh, so what we just did with four disk, uh, you can go to this animation. Uh, I have to play it in Firefox because it does not work in uh, the Chrome browser. But it's this animation here, and the uh, link was on the slide I just showed you. So this actually solves a more general problem. You can have uh, more than three pegs, but we're just going to have three pegs, and I'll do a four disk solution like they have in the thing, and you can speed it up or slowing slow it down here. So you can put a speed anywhere from one up to fifty, and then what you do is you say get the solution, and it'll reconfigure itself once you've done these settings. Okay. There it goes. So now you see there's only four disks and there's three pegs. And we'll go ahead and run it. So now you say show the solution and watch as it runs. If it was a little too fast for you, uh, go to the website and decrease the speed and you can see it work for yourself. So that shows you solving the problem. Uh, and you can play around with different size solutions. It's useful to look at like two and three, which are real simple, and slow it down and look at all the steps so you can see how it's following the algorithm. Uh, but that's basically a, a, an algorithm. Now this is an example of an algorithm. Uh, I don't know anyone that's figured out other than recursively how to solve this, because uh, it's a complex thing to think out. But since you can think of a recursive solution to get you closer uh, by doing a height minus one, and then you can decide on the base case. You can easily write a recursive solution. In fact, we saw the code uh, was ridiculously simple. It's only a four, um, let's see, five line method to solve the problem and a helper method to print that we're moving a disk. Uh, so that's it. And so next we're going to go to a much harder problem.